now this um trip that i'm meant to be taking to ukraine <laughs> to go to kiev and this is it's funny right because i mentioned ukraine the other day on the podcast about how oh i'm tempted to go i'm really well, I'm tempted i really want to go i've already got a month planned out that i want to go and visit i've already specced out a couple of airbnbs i've made a wish list um of ones i want to stay at i've also got google maps going with locations i want to visit and restaurants and all this sort of stuff and um, monuments and bloody blah, blah 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 and i guess i was so head in the clouds i completely missed the political situation that's going on there in ukraine because i guess once i was when i was searching for stuff regarding kiev i was just searching in terms of kiev nightclubs kiev restaurants kiev whatever art galleries kiev vintage stores i wasn't searching just the keyword ukraine because these days on google the great thing about it if you just search a country imagine you want to go to like lanzarote you want to go to costa rica whatever you just write in google and it will usually give you the first few links obviously if there's nothing going on it'll just be stuff concerning the country you want to go to but usually if there's something happened within the last month or so in the, in the country you want to visit they'll usually give you a little heads up like there'll be some news articles there oh this happened here this happened there so at least you have an idea what's going on you're not just walking in blind and i guess once i typed in just the word ukraine and didn't write the kiev instantly articles such as the following popped up on my feed russia ukraine what's happening on the border and why are tensions so high and you've got this picture on sky news of a soldier um, a russian troop stationed on the border with ukraine with his gun out and a tank behind him you're like okay cool so says the following the us and uk have warned by russia that it would pay a heavy price if it invades ukraine tensions between the russia and the west are at the worst they have been since the cold war with uk foreign secretary liz Truss claiming that an invasion would only lead to a terrible quagmire and loss of life so a slight warning from good old liz Truss. it continues or Liz truce um currently more than currently more than rush sorry currently more than russian what currently uh, more than 100,000 Russian troops are stationed at, uh, at various points along the border with Ukraine, a former Soviet state. Uh, President Vladimir Putin and his officials insist that they're just carrying out military exercises. But fears of an invasion have been mounting since last year when satellite imagery showed um, Russia sending more equipment and personnel. You know, this reminds me of this idea that, oh, no, we're just we're just doing some training exercises. We're just getting our soldiers through some burpees in full gear just to see if they're up to it. This kind of reminds me of that episode of Family Guy where Brian is like all jacked up. No, or Stewie's all jacked up in it. And he's like, you know, he's like stopping Brian at the door. Hey, hey, hey. Every time Brian tries to pass, he does that. And then he's like, oh, and he gets scared. He's like, I'm only joking with you. And he does it again all the time. That kind of like um, bully, that kind of a, uh, that kind of bully boy tactic thing where you're trying to pretend like you're not doing anything, but you are doing something by just your mere presence. Um, it's also a story briefly it says here ukraine was part of the ufc it's the russian empire for centuries before it became part of the ussr when the soviet union dissolved in the end of cold war in 1991 ukraine became independent uh, although their shared history means the two are still very culturally linked ukraine has sought to distance itself from russia in recent years and instead looked to the west for support which probably explains why everyone's basically going there because i would have imagined if you do, just looking from your head you would have thought hmm Russia's, Russia and Ukraine are quite linked. You wouldn't necessarily think Russia has the greatest clubbing scene ever, but it actually does. A lot of people say going out to St. Petersburg and stuff is actually a good time. But then I guess because Russia, Ukraine have definitely made a stand to say, hey, we're completely different from Russia. We have a very progressive sort of um, um, Western way of looking at the world and our culture and whatnot. People have maybe felt a bit more comfortable about going there because, you know, why else would you go to a country like that? But then also there was that report a few months ago about that far right Nazi group, you know, going and basically bombarding some bar. I think it's like HLVL or something like that. Um, that obviously sounds a bit sketchy. And I would imagine those same people wouldn't be too happy if they saw my mug, would they? <laughs> they wouldn't be too happy, but we hope and pray. It continues here. It says, by contrast, Ukraine has a huge loss. Sorry, it was a huge loss for Russia as it had the biggest population of all former Soviet states to break away from Moscow. And with Vladimir Putin's rise to power, the Kremlin has sought to regain influence and control over its former territories. It's funny though, right? Um, Russia feels as if Ukraine is becoming too westernized. So they want to regain control by installing a puppet government in order to do what? Do you know what I mean? You feel like they are getting influenced by the foreign powers, but then you want to go in and what rectify it. So they're acting as if they're doing what the America do, right? Acting as the world's police, but they're acting as Soviet police. 
<laughs> mad um this began with more subtle approach in the early 2000s but when its favored candidate in 20, 2004 ukrainian election victor yokankov y- was ousted by for rigging the results amid orange revolution protests in kiev things began to change furious with the election of pro-western opposition candidate victor yashenko the mr putin's approach became more aggressive it culminated in russia's illegal ex- annexation of the ukraine peninsula of crimea in 2014 i remember that uh, mr m yashenko managed to gain regain power sorry to gain power after five years of mr yashenko in 2010 and served for four years but when the kremlin backed president rejected the association agreement with the eu in favor to bolster relations with moscow there was a huge protest and he was ousted so ukrainian people don't ramp in it Russian's response was to annex Crimea and declare it independent from Ukraine. It also sent troops in the Ukrainian region of Donetsk and Luhansk, Lush- L- L- an area known as Donbass, to support the separatists who have been trying to break away from the country. Fighting in Donbass, which is near the Russian border, has resulted in the death of more than 14,000 people since 2014. God almighty. I had no idea. France and Germany are spearheaded a peace agreement between the two sides in 2015, which helped end major conflicts, but it failed to unite the two sides politically, and small scale tensions have continued since then. In early 2002 and in early 2021, there had been an increase in incidences of breaking the 2015 ceasefire, which fueled fears of a war. But in April, Moscow pulled back most of its troops, and tensions lessened so yeah it's a it's a hot pot situation loads of things are going on there and i just want to go and rave really this is why we need um lex friedman to get on the blower and have vladimir putin sit down his podcast and kind of hash things out again if lex friedman can lead with love it's i think this interview with this lex wants with vladimir putin is going to be a car crash isn't it my man wants to it's it's like how can you interview vladimir putin without mentioning the fact that he allegedly might have got some of his political opponents flipping oft and that you know he's trying to basically take back control of a country that has has kind of pulled away and gained independence because he feels that they're becoming too western like what legal right do they have to do that and he has to sit there and pretend what he has to ask some question about judo (laughs) what about what time he wakes up what his favorite books are it's like come on man although i would like to see an interview with Vladimir Putin and Lex Friedman simply so we could just hear Vladimir Putin speak English for an entire interview because he clearly can speak English but he prefers not to he prefers to just do that what what a lot of foreign people do where they they would much rather pretend like they don't understand your language or or act dumb in the hope that you will basically take them you basically what's that word called you take them for not take them for granted but you basically want to take them seriously so that they can then show you how really smart they are by ups by kind of you know one upping you later on down the line it's a very clever tactic like if you especially if you don't want to um give anybody an inch in negotiation tactics and skills you know what i mean taking away the language factor it immediately makes the other person feel as if they're smarter do you know what i mean when they actually aren't because it's just language what makes you think because you speak one language and i speak another that you're any smarter than i am that makes no sense but i would like to hear what his english speaking voice is like and how what his humor is like and his perspective on that regard that would be interesting but lex Friedman is gonna go in there and just jack him off and start speaking about love uniting healing the world asking him questions about the flipping facebook metaverse like what you've got you've got you've got flipping vladimir putin sitting next to you i mean one of the most uh interesting and fearsome leaders out there who's legitimately you know got blood on his hands and you're gonna sit there asking him about flipping facebook and whether or not he likes instagram come on man I want to find out where his daughters are. Like we don't get pictures. Like he's fascinating, man. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Um, there's a mansion that he supposedly built. Let me see if I can get it. Um, let's just see. It was like a mansion that he built, right? That was Vlad. Let me see if I can get it here. Vladimir Putin mansion. Some mansion that he built that looked amazing. It was like in the side of a mountain. Supposedly, it's it's a new thing that it was built, right? I'm not too sure if it's built. Yeah, this is the one. See look at this shit supposedly he bought this like it looks like some flipping thing out of a super villain movie right or of a superhero movie putin's house in whatever that word is skull designed by visualization let me check out see if this is actually real i remember seeing this on a feed one time look at that it's in like the built in the middle of the forest it looks like a looks like something from the 1970s something like that like the jetsons it's essentially on the plinth raised up in a platform and it's got the house all on one floor amazing um 
the Russian architect and designer Roman Vlasko of Roman Las Lasov, or is that his Las Lasov, or do you say Vlasov? I guess it's Lasov. Has envisioned Putin's house, a fantastic conceptual house design nestled uh, among the forests in Sochi, the largest resort in Russia. Or a story about it. oh, so it's a, it's a concept. It's not an actual real home. Oh man, I got duped again, once again. But it looks amazing, though, doesn't it? Look at that. But that's what I want to ask him about. Like, you know, what's the deal with this? How do you get up there? <laughs> why did you why did you design this? <laughs> what sort of evil plans have you got in, in case for it? It's absolutely amazing, honestly. It looks so cool. But yeah, whatever. Well, let's see what happens. Um obviously the Ukraine trip is still on on pause now for the moment. Need to find out what's gonna go on over there in Ukraine. Hopefully things are not too crazy. And if they aren't, of course I'm still gonna go. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And again, any recommendations for people that have been there, let me know in the comments down below. I'll put the um link to my contact thing on my podcast page for you to obviously to contact me and let me know too. That'd be greatly appreciated. Any heads up, I would really appreciate it.